Hello, I'm Dr. David Richardson. I'm a cataract and glaucoma surgeon in Southern California. During my morning commute, I like to discuss those topics that there's just not enough time to discuss in a typical exam room situation. So today I'd like to discuss a class of glaucoma medications, actually just one in the class of myotics, pilocarpine. So let's get going. Now, the myotic agents uh, work by constricting the pupil, uh, pulling the iris root away from the angle, and by doing so, stretching open the trabecular meshwork. And the trabecular meshwork, as we've talked about, is the um, primary source of resistance to flow out of the eye. It tends to be the place where glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, is located in terms of what we call the pathology of it, or at least uh, that's what's thought of as the major pathology. We know there are other issues now as well. But in any case, what uh, pilocarpine does is it pulls the iris root, stretches open the trabecular meshwork, and essentially by stretching it open, it allows more flow out of the eye into Schlem's canal, which is the drainage canal, and then out through the collector channel system into the venous blood system. Now, pilocarpine has been around for many decades, uh, and it works reasonably well, not quite as well as timolol, but uh, again, reasonably well. The issue with pilocarpine, and there are multiple issues, but the main one, I would say, is just that it's incredibly inconvenient to, to dose. Uh, it has to be dosed four times a day, or less that's the typical recommendation. Uh, there is a study that suggests that twice daily dosing may be acceptable with punctal occlusion, meaning uh, occluding the drainage duct between the eye and the sinuses, uh, which essentially allows the drop to stay in contact with the surface of the eye longer. So it's possible that uh, twice daily dosing would be acceptable. But even so, uh, there are other issues that keep pilocarpine from being commonly prescribed. The main issues are side effects. It's just really hard to tolerate pilocarpine, uh, at least in the doses that seem to have an effect on the intraocular pressure. So some of the things that we can see uh, that are eye-related include a change in refractive error. Uh, so essentially, uh, it would <clears throat> to result in a change in where somebody can see best without glasses and it may make them dependent on glasses. A headache is quite common. Uh, the other things that we can see, difficulty with vision at night because the pupil gets really small. Although on the flip side to that, because the pupil becomes kind of a pinhole pupil, like a pinhole camera, uh, you can actually get better near vision in, in good light. Most concerning, however, is that, especially in myopes, those who are nearsighted, pilocarpine may increase the risk of retinal detachment. The, the other problem with that is that over time, after many months or years of use, the pupil doesn't expand as well as it used to. So if you do have a retinal detachment, it's harder to detect it because it's harder to see through a small pupil. Now, there are other side effects that are worth noting uh, that are systemic, although these are pretty rare in the lower doses for most people, but they include things like sweating, salivation, difficulty breathing, and uh, even abnormal heart rhythm. And rarely, uh, but probably more in the, in the elderly or those who already have some mental status issue, um, change in cognition, so change in uh, the ability to think. So how can these side effects be reduced? Well, uh, there's a couple things. We talked about punctal occlusion, so uh, either with the fingers or with a balled up piece of uh, tissue. Uh, the other is to start with a low dose and increase the dose slowly so that uh, you're using the lowest dose that provides a benefit in terms of intraocular pressure lowering. So pilocarpine is available from a 0.5%, so a half a percent uh, dosing, uh, 1%, 2%, 4%, and 6%, although it's pretty hard to find the 0.5% as well as the 6%. Uh, now, the other thing that can be done to decrease the side effects is twice-a-day dosing, as we talked about. And uh, you know that's worth considering if uh, pilocarpine has been prescribed for you. 
The other issue with pilocarpine is even though it's been around for many decades, and you've heard me say this kind of thing before, you would think that it's available generically, it should be cheap. It's not. It's about $200 a bottle, at least the last time I checked, which for most people is not affordable. So given all of these issues of pilocarpine, when do we use pilocarpine? Well, it's rarely used uh, as an outpatient prescription. In other words, it's rarely something that doctors prescribe for patients to take at home. It's generally prescribed if somebody has narrow angles and is coming in for a type of laser therapy for uh, that condition, then often we will use pilocarpine in the office to essentially stretch out the iris, thin it out, make it easier to perform the laser. Uh, It's really not used uh, much outside of that. Another reason why it's not prescribed very much uh, for use at home is that pilocarpine not only opens up the trabecular meshwork, but it also appears to have a negative impact on the uveoscleral outflow system, which is the system that the most commonly uh, prescribed drop, prostaglandin analogs, uh, uses. So in theory, pilocarpine could counteract the effect of the prostaglandin analogs that most people are on uh, in clinical use that may not actually uh, pan out. But as I said, there's plenty of other reasons not to uh, prescribe pilocarpine. So anyway, it's uh, it's still an important class. Uh, It's been around for a long time, but it's, it's not one that will probably be prescribed for you. But if it is, now you know about it. All right. I hope this was uh, helpful and uh, look forward to another video with you.